Have you ever wondered how some players in your favorite mobile games seem to have unlimited health, endless coins, or godlike abilities? It's not always magic or a secret developer code. Often, it's the work of sophisticated tools that reach into the very heart of a game while it's running, manipulating it in real time. This is the world of memory editing, a fascinating and complex cat and mouse game played between cheaters and game developers. Today, we're going to pull back the curtain and deconstruct exactly how these tools, like the infamous Game Guardian, fundamentally operate. This isn't a guide on how to cheat, but an educational deep dive into the computer science that makes it all possible. By understanding the how, we can appreciate the incredible security measures that protect the games we love. To understand how a game can be modded, we first need to understand where a game lives. When you launch a game, its most important data isn't on your device's slow, permanent storage. It's loaded into a fast, temporary workspace called Random Access Memory, or RAM. Think of RAM as a chef's countertop, where all the ingredients needed for a meal are placed for quick access, while the pantry is your phone's main storage. For a game to run smoothly, critical information like your character's health, your score, or the amount of ammo you have is all kept on this countertop for the processor to grab and change in fractions of a second. This data is live and constantly changing, the very design that makes games fast and responsive. This reliance on fast, volatile memory is precisely what creates the opportunity for memory editing. The tools don't target the game files in the pantry. They target the live ingredients on the countertop. Now, how is something abstract like health or score represented on this digital countertop? It's all stored as numbers in memory. Game developers use standard conventions. A whole number, like your ammo count of 30, is stored as an integer. A number with a decimal, like your character's precise location on a map, is stored as a floating point number. These values have a specific size in memory, usually measured in bytes. This predictability is the first vulnerability that memory editing tools exploit. When a cheater wants to find their health value, they don't search for the word health. They start by telling a tool to search for a 4-byte integer with a value of 100. The tool then scans all of the game's memory, looking for that exact number. This reliance on convention is the first crack in the armor. However, there's a huge problem for any would-be cheater. The Android operating system is designed specifically to prevent this. Its most important security feature is called the Application Sandbox. Imagine every app on your phone living in its own sealed, windowless room. The operating system, acting as a security guard, gives each app a unique ID and strictly forbids it from looking into any other app's room or interfering with its contents. A memory editing tool is just another app living in its own room. The game it wants to modify is in a completely separate locked room. By default, the editor has zero permission to access the game's memory. So how do these tools get past the guard and pick the lock? This is the first and most critical mod, not against the game, but against the operating system's fundamental security. Historically, the most direct method was rooting the device. Rooting is like getting a master key to every room in the building. It grants an application super user privileges, allowing it to bypass the sandbox entirely. With root access, a memory editor can use powerful system commands to attach to the game's process, freely read its memory, and write new values into it. However, rooting has major drawbacks. It can void warranties, create security risks, and prevent high security apps like banking apps from running. As Android became more secure, a new, cleverer method emerged. Virtualization. Apps like Virtual Exposed or Parallel Space create a sandbox within a sandbox. A completely self-contained, emulated Android environment running inside a regular app. The user then installs both the game and the memory editor inside this virtual world. Within this controlled space, the virtualization app is the administrator and can grant the memory editor the fake root permissions it needs to access the game's memory. This allows cheating without tampering with the main operating system, a strategic pivot in this ongoing technological arms race. Once the sandbox is bypassed, the real hunt begins. The tool attaches to the game process and the user performs an initial scan. Let's say your in-game gold is 500. You tell the tool to find every instance of the number 500 in the game's memory. This might return thousands, even millions of results. To narrow it down, you go back into the game and change the value. You spend some gold, and now you have 450. You then tell the tool to filter its previous results, 
keeping only the memory addresses that changed from 500 to 450. After a few more rounds of changing the value in game and filtering the results, you'll be left with just one or two addresses. That's it, the location of your gold. Now you can freeze it, telling the tool to constantly overwrite that memory address with a fixed number, or you can simply write in a new value, giving yourself millions of gold instantly. But there's another complication. This memory address is temporary. When you close and restart the game, the operating system allocates new memory, and your health or gold will be in a completely different place. This is called dynamic memory allocation. Searching for the value every time is tedious. This is where a more advanced technique called pointer scanning comes in. Think of it like this. While the address of your health value is dynamic and changes every time, the game needs a reliable way to find it. It often uses something called a pointer, a variable that doesn't hold the health value itself, but holds the memory address of the health value. This pointer might be located at a static, predictable address that never changes. The goal of pointer scanning is to find this stable path. The tool first finds the dynamic address of your health. Then, it scans the entire memory to find any pointers that are pointing to that address. By restarting the game several times, and cross-referencing which pointer paths remain consistent, the tool can eventually identify a stable chain, sometimes multiple levels deep, that starts from a static base address, and reliably leads to the dynamic health value every single time the game starts. This is a brute force method of reverse engineering the game's data structure without ever seeing the source code. The most powerful techniques, however, go beyond just changing numbers. They change the game's rules. This is done through code injection and function hooking. Instead of modifying data, this method modifies the game's logic. An attacker uses a disassembler to find the actual machine code instructions for a function, like the function that subtracts health when you take damage. They then find an empty space in the game's memory, a code cave, and write their own custom code there. The final step is to overwrite the very first instruction of the original take damage function with a jump command that redirects the game's execution flow to their malicious code. This is called hooking. The injected code might do nothing, creating a god mode, or it could even replace the subtract instruction with an add instruction, making you heal from damage. This is the pinnacle of cheating, requiring a deep understanding of assembly language and program execution. The cheater is no longer just a player, they are acting as a rogue developer, forcing the game to run their own code. Naturally, game developers don't take this lying down. They have their own arsenal of defenses. A common client-side technique is memory obfuscation. Instead of storing health as a simple number, like 100, the game might perform a mathematical operation on it, like an XOR with a secret key, storing a scrambled value in memory. Anyone searching for 100 will find nothing. Another method is data duplication, where health is stored in two separate locations. The game constantly checks if the two values match. If a cheater modifies one but not the other, the game detects the discrepancy and can crash itself or flag the account. Developers also use checksum validation to ensure the game's own files haven't been tampered with before it even launches. However, for competitive online games, the ultimate defense is a server authoritative architecture. In this model, your device is essentially a dumb terminal. It just sends your inputs, like move forward or shoot, to the game server. The server is the one true source of truth. It validates your input, updates the game state, calculates all damage, and then sends a snapshot of the world back to your device for you to see. If you modify your health from 100 to 999 on your device, it's meaningless. The server knows your health is 100, and the very next update it sends will overwrite your fraudulent value. If you get shot, the server does the math, determines your health is zero, and kicks you out of the match, regardless of what your screen says. This model is incredibly effective, but also expensive, requiring a global network of dedicated servers. The choice to use it is a reflection of how seriously a developer takes competitive integrity. Ultimately, the technology behind memory editing is neutral. The same tools and techniques used to cheat in a game, attaching to a process, reading memory, and inspecting variables are used by developers every day in a process called debugging to find and fix bugs. The difference is intent. In a single-player game, modifying your experience is a personal choice. But in a multiplayer environment, it becomes an ethical breach. It violates the social contract of fair play, devaluing the skill and effort of everyone else.
Legally, it's almost always a direct violation of the game's terms of service, which you agree to before playing, and can lead to a permanent ban. The world of memory editing reveals a deep and ongoing technological struggle, a clash between the desire for an unfair advantage and the complex layered systems built to ensure that, in the end, the game is played fairly. Thanks for watching.